Um, hello, hello, welcome everybody to Quadrupod Studios. Today with another episode with Darcy from Last One Standing Strategies. Find him on Instagram, Last One, our LOS Strategies. I believe that's right. Yeah, I think it's an underscore, like L underscore O and underscore S strategy. LOS Strategies. I think if you just search LOS Strategies, it'll come up. Also find Darcy at Tertia Online, T I R S I A Online.com. Go to the store, scroll down, and you will find him in the supplementary training zone uh, for some of his uh, classes that he has available on there. And today we're going to be going over some um, survival um, equipment, so packs. Maybe go through one or two different packs, and and uh, Kit and Darcy are going to uh, kind of break down what's good and what's not for dis- different situations. So uh, welcome back, everybody. Uh, Kit, take it away. Happy New Year, everybody. Thank you very much, Robin. Bring in the quadru- uh, Quadrupod Studios to the new year, new developments, new learning, uh, you know, fixing your and refining your skills that are in your brain that you get to carry all the time. Darcy's here with the wizardry of... Using these skills to create your own tools and heat and fire. And what we have today is a pack that might be somebody's everyday carry or a hiker's pack or going out for the night pack or just some of the essentials that will create uh, the things that you can do with your hands and your breath. Darcy, welcome. Hey, thanks for having me, you guys. Um, Happy to be here. And again, Happy New Year's, everybody. It's been a pretty wild one. We got far more to go. So about this pack that we're going to take a look at um, that Kit's brought to the table here. Um, as you guys can see, right away, it's got a lot of choice gear. Um, this is something that you might see uh, somebody, again, like you said, hiking for a, a full day or um, someone who maybe um, ha- has some bushcraft ideas they like to expand on. So they're taking their gear out with them that they can then utilize to expand on those ideas. We have right away you guys can see we have some of the basics here. Um, we've got our fire, we've got our cutters, and with this trio of small knife, saw, and big knife, um, we can do a lot uh, as far as bushcrafting or survival. Um, we can build pretty much anything we need out of those three, whether it be um, the the sources or sorry, almost anything we need for the food, fire, water, shelter out of our five pillars, um, whether it be, you know, containers or um, uh, systems of fire, either making or fire carrying. Um, I mean, there's a huge range. We could even make realistic. We could even make water containers and water bottles out of what we see here right now. Um, so why don't we go through this together cool. and as we're going through it, why don't you tell us about the kit itself, um, the reasons why you have these different bits of gear, and then I'm going to chime in every once in a while on what I might Perfect. might do with it also. So exactly like you said, right now it's exploring uh, possibilities and how to create uh, uh, new skills with ideas and, and tools. Uh, little uh, tiny Japanese uh, folding saw uh, is uh, a bone saw for deer or uh, any uh, butchering that needs to be done if you're catching animals and you're out that long. So for survival for long term, also for shelter for long term, making uh, staffs or sticks and uh, can quite it, it can cut a, a large log that can be made into a small cabin or a small lean-to. Yeah. I really like this one. Yeah, these are great tools, hey? So um, I've got one of these silkies also. Um, mine's, uh, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's another pocket boy. I'm not sure the exact name of it. It's just a little bigger, black handle. Same kind of gear, though, you know, um, with even this back edge, uh, the back edge of the saw, it, because it's 90 degreed off, we can actually use that as a scraper mm-hmm. for our ferrocium, but we could also use it as a scraper for, um, let's say, uh, harvesting roots or other plants. And we just take off the bark. Yep. Um, we could honestly, we could even use that on the inside of an animal to get the fat off if we had to. I mean, there's a huge so, range of options. So lots of uh, 
with one tool that can do many things, you're, you're really cutting down on the weight that you're carrying exactly. and adding the disciplines. It'd be really exactly. fun to explore, uh, even just to shoot uh, in the future with just this tool and the options available or that you can create. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, that, you know, I think that that's a really good study in itself. I think that more people should um, take one or two tools at a time out to the woods and spend maybe the day or a few days or if they have a higher skill level a week and just go through all the things that they can think of that they can replace with that one tool. I mean, I've done that with my knife. I've done that with uh, my axe. I've done that with a lot of things over the years. And um, <clears throat> it's amazing what you'll come up with as far as your, your imagination goes uh, that we mentioned in our last podcast. You know, you can look at this object as the way it's sold in the store and then you can actually start to unpack how this object actually is like where there's sharp edges where's the locking mechanism end and begin because you can do two different levels with this certain this the same saw oh, oh cool yeah very nice you can do that i never knew that things. option yeah <laughs> holy cow yeah well that's so it's that's what these two oh, i was gonna ask are. what those little grooves were yeah, yeah so it's a different setting of uh the angle for what would be that uh, just a high cut yeah well this is this changes setting your angle like top. maybe i'm oh. going underneath yep um maybe i am you know in a weird space with a couple other branches there um but yeah no it's these are great bits of gear these silky saws like i said i've got i've got one that i carry with me whenever i go to the woods um really really handy very cool yeah and again you can use case, it a lot of different ways uh your case this is a plastic and and the cord you know the metal in here you can use these for other things i guess but uh over time they uh kind of disintegrate so yeah. it's really just about the tool yeah so like the the case that it comes with yeah like you said doesn't it, you can do a few things with it like i mean if we had um we had let's say we we're in a, in a really wet environment uh in the rain and it was freaking pissing um we could add a sealant like a fat to the edges of the lid because there's no rubber seal on it for you guys that can't see us right now yep. um, we can put a fat seal there um, and then at the very bottom, it has a little hole, like a, like a drainage hole. We could cover that up with something and then we could keep our dry tinder in here as we transverse the landscape. Yep. Um, and our saw actually has a nifty hole in the back that we can run a piece of cord throw through or a carabiner, um, which would cool. eliminate the need to actually have the case being used only as a case. Yep. Same for, uh, the small, uh, knife here. Uh, it's got a it's got a belt uh, uh, sheath, and what you called that uh, the other day because it was molded. It's a, a mold to the yeah. So the product itself is uh, is a Kydex, um, and what uh, you can order it online. But you, people also make a lot of these sheaths for you. Um, they uh, they heat it up, and then you can shape the tool. Um, within it and then it, when it cools it holds the shape and allows you to create this kind of like friction fit like mm -hmm. see how for you guys that can't see I'm, I'm kind of shaking the knife um, and it's not falling out of its sheath um, and that's because of the friction fit capabilities yep. of the knife itself um, and that's a that's a good bit of gear it it won't last um, forever you know but it is plastic so it'll last for quite a long time and because it is plastic it's remoldable uh, for maybe other uses so you could um, if you had to and you only had the sheath, this kind of plastic is such a hard nature that we could actually make a small blade out of this plastic and sharpen it to an edge to use for arrow points or a number of other things. Mm -hmm. So that's a way that we could utilize this um, sheath after maybe we lost the knife yeah. um, in another way. And what I, I do like about uh, this knife is I, I carried knives in the past, cheap knives, not very sharp and you can really tell the quality of a good knife on its performance of what it does at least i have now learned and the uh, ability of uh, the ease of slicing it was almost Ooh, like yeah. butter rather than having to force energy to create the same cuts that's good that's good that you noticed that yeah because you know it's the important thing about having a sharp knife is that you actually have less chance of injury mm -hmm. you know when you're pushing through a piece of wood with a lot of force, all it takes is a small slip to create a very large wound. Whereas if it's a sharp blade, um, whether it be axe, machete, or knife, um, you're like you said, you're able to work through the wood. You're able to work through the flesh of the animal um, in a far easier way, mm -hmm. in which gives you more precision from your cuts. 
And yeah, this uh, this is a beauty by uh, Halle. Holy. And then the the An- larger one. Anecdotal knife story. My mm. mom was actually cutting, uh, scraping wax off her skis uh, when she was younger and slipped and cut a huge part of her forearm to get to get to get heli, helied out Sh- of the wow. area there. So very important to have a sharp knife. Uh, so you don't slip and cut yourself. Yeah, there's less chance, right? There's, yeah, exactly, and that's that's a really good point. Um, this is another good point. This is another Hele. These are just absolutely beautiful knives. Um, for you guys who can't see, these are of the um, Scandinavian style. They have a single bevel, which I'm a um, huge fan of when it comes to uh, any sort of um, edged edge tool. I like to have a single bevel. It's just it's easier for 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 me to sharpen um to recreate the edge if there's any sort of damage um and so what that is is it's a single bevel um edge instead of a double bevel if you take a look at most knives that most people own and you look at it it's going to have a double bevel and that is to keep the the strength within the edge it's kind of a cheap way of doing it too um it's a harder way to sharpen um and it's a harder harder edge to use for a lot of actual bushcraft, whereas these Scandinavian grinds, these are just beautiful. I mean, you get that long kind of cascading draw across whatever whatever it is you're cutting, whether it be uh, flesh or uh, bone, or sorry, flesh or wood. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, really <clears throat> solid 90 degree angle here on the top of the knife, which allows me to use it for scraping um, my ferrocium rod to make sparks, allows me to scrape the bark off different things, whether I'm making cordage or I'm using something for medicine. Um, there's just a huge range you can use that actual square edge on the top of the knife for. I, I really like the wood handles, the the essence of a handmade tool rather than the machine-made tools, and I think it carries something uh, to the use of it and the yeah. connection that you have with it. Definitely, yeah. I mean, I, I know the that organic kind of feeling of your gear is totally different. Um, mm-hmm. I just finished, a, a, a refinished a handle on a tomahawk last night that uh, a friend had given me, and it had a heavy layer of lacquer across the wood. Mm-hmm. Um, I took I took that all off, cleaned it right up. Cool. And it just, it, it feels so much better in the hand. Now. Yep. And these are, you know, these heli knives by no means are, any short of just beautiful in themselves. I mean, the the woodwork that goes into these are all it's all really nice, great shapes. The essential um, wood uh, humid humidifier for the uh, <laughs> yeah. for the cannabis. Bear? That's a bear in the rain. Cannabis uh, um, cannons, we call them. I've got some cedar little cedar shavings that I got at the beach with also some. Uh, uh, grass, dry tinder, just in there uh, to uh, be able to start some fires. Yeah, and you know, some. and and having a little having a little bag like this, um, this is handy. Some of the some of the old cowboys would have done this with a little leather bag. Um, you know, whatever you can, just keeping it as dry as possible. And uh, you know, having this this little bit of birch bark in here um, is you know amazing for starting fires with. Like the cedar's great. The grass is great, and the birch bark will burn just about anywhere, anytime, um, which is, as you would know, is hugely important when you're trying to make a fire. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know, and, and it's amazing because it doesn't take up a lot of gear, but having multiple ways to start a fire is so important. You know, people will think like, "Oh, I've got a lighter." It's like, okay, you might have a lighter, and they think, "Oh, I've got a fair seam rod." It's like, sure, you have a fair seam rod, but you know, if you have a lighter, you know, like you have here a bic lighter. And you have um, a lens like you got here in your bag, and then a really nice fair seam rod. You know, between these three things, um, what you've got is a timeline of fires within your kit. You know, a lot of people think of just, they just think of fire, but really they should be thinking about their next fire and the next fire and the next fire. So we look at it this way the lighter offers single hand use, Mm -hmm. and I get open flame on demand. It's really good short term. It's really good in emergency. I like that you got a red one here. It's good you picked out a red lighter. It's just easier to find, less chance of losing. Mm-hmm. It's not some cool tactical green shit. <laughs> and then here we've got our um, our lens, which you know it needs uh, specific um, kind of uh, weather. 
beautiful day today. The sun popped out yeah. and you could get the doobie lit on that one. <laughs> totally, totally <laughs> good. And, and so, I mean, that's really handy to have because this is a long-term tool. Mm-hmm. That's the way I look at this. It's like This is something like your flint and steel. This is something you could use for the rest of your life if you're in the woods and you yep. just decided that's it. Um, you just, this one is weather dependent, but it's still, again, one of, uh, sorry, two of the, um, three, three parts of your kit that are really important is that, that try out of fire. And then here you've got your ferrocium, um, which been, has been sunk ever beautifully into a piece of, um, ant, uh, antler from a deer. It's really nice. Uh, what's the guy's name? Peter Woodland. He's, Peter Woodland. Yeah. He's making axes. No, you oh, this is what he's got an ax now. That in the handle, the ferrocium bolted in uh, to the, nice. and then it's reinforced too. So yeah, I'm like really liking that. his uh, new new works. He puts out beautiful gear. So I believe um, he's PJ Woodland. PJ Woodland on Instagram. You guys hear that? Look up PJ Woodland on Instagram. He told me personally it's a ten percent off for anybody that uh, sponsored comes by to, PJ Woodland. Yeah, <laughs> <that's right. laughs> totally. yeah. So again, this is a. The fair seam rod is not necessarily short term or long term. It's kind of a mid term thing. The thing about the fair seam is it works in all weather types. Um, you can be in the rain, thundering down, and as long as your tinder is of the right nature, you're going to be able to throw a spark on something that's going to catch. It's a little. Uh, it's a little. Uh what oxidized we call it <laughs> yeah yeah you can see where because uh i don't know if I you guys listen, swim. if you guys don't know who are listening kit likes to jump in the ocean often and one of his newest games is jump in the water with my knife and my ferrocium swim come out make fire <laughs> which is a great practice um if you are in any sort of uh has any sort of interest in survival or bushcraft getting out of the water and making fire is an easy to set up challenge but not always an easy to do challenge so it's definitely worth trying out it's uh, your fingers don't work as well your mind is a little uh, not building up the skills enough and so it's uh, it's it's dangerous situations that should be practiced in front of a bunch of guys or people together so that you're safe and then you're just practicing more push-ups than yesterday that's all you're doing <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally that's a good way of putting it because you know that's the thing like it's 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 uh that challenge um that we that we issue ourselves in those different situations that allow us to develop you know in our adult years because we have control over our domain in such a way um we can choose not to accept a lot of challenge that in our youth we did not have the ability to veer away from and in doing so i think we're creating a very soft a very soft public um and don't get me wrong i like comfortably numb yeah i like comfortable stuff too but it won't make you a stronger more capable human being to be comfortable and you know um and that could mean that could mean in different a whole bunch of different areas oh so many so the the that circle of areas of dimensional uh, expansion or stretching uh, could be in your mind, physical or spirit, and oh, that's uh, I think that practice of just expanding and getting more in tune to all your abilities is is really fun. Oh yeah, it's it's I mean, and it's great practice. I mean, you feel good after you do it. You you know, anytime you um, crush some sort of challenge in any way. Uh, you feel better after, you know, yeah. even if it was hard in the moment, it's, yep. you get out of it, you feel great. Let's go. I've get, I got the big side here and I take it up with my water bottle. I like to have a liter of water, especially when I'm taking Tigger out uh, because he always needs water. Got a pen in there. Nice, nice. And a sharpener. Fairmont, no less. Yeah, a little Fairmont <laughs> pen. Oh, look, I think they're sponsored oh, by geez, Fairmont. Oh, jeez, 20 bucks. <laughs> I got lunch, oh, guys. Whoa, 20 <laughs> bucks. Will that burn? 20 that, bucks. Yeah, that's plastic. That, 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 thing, that thing will run a car. Oh, goodness. Yeah. The oh, jeez. <laughs> This is where the money went. <laughs> Holy crap. I've been looking for this for a long time. Oh, that is horrible. I like who's got lunch. <laughs> <laughs>
damn it. <laughs> Survival of the finest. That must be my everyday carry pack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so jumping into our EDC, <laughs> there's, uh, there's parts of this kit that we would use as EDC. Um, there's some things that we might well, not take so, with us. Uh, on the, I have lots of metal uh, little clips, too, for different uh, things. Yeah, so let's talk about those. Let's okay. talk about these clips. Um, these, uh, I like, I like, I have, I have a couple of these with me all the time myself, mm -hmm. um, carabiners and stuff. They, they offer a lot of, um, ease to situations. Like even if I have to get my stuff into a tree and I want to be able to, uh, you know, put food in the tree or a dead animal in the tree, um, I can Leverage. use, yeah, I can use these quite easily. Right. Um, and I can set them up like little pulleys into the tree. Um, if I want to create different types of traps, that are um, load-bearing traps with a lot of weight. Um, these are going to make my trap a lot easier. Granted, if I'm springing this trap on a human being, I'm going to want to maybe paint this up so it's not so shiny and bright that they can just look up and see it. Um, but nevertheless, this is going to make the whole trap work a lot more smooth. Not to mention, I can use these for setting up different types of shelter also. I mean, these are great bits of gear. They don't take up a lot of space. They don't have a lot of weight, but they have a lot of uses clip the 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 uh, what is it pocket boy to the uh, pack exactly right so use the case um for you guys who can't see there's a hole right through the handle of the pocket boy silky saw that we were talking about earlier throw a carabiner through there pack down the case or pack down the outside of the uh, outside of your bag um safety pins fish hooks yeah so weights. this is a uh, a couple of you know a couple of things um where we live that uh are important to forage upon or fish. Um, we live here on the BC West Coast, um, and it would be asinine of us not to take advantage or train to take advantage of the fish and all the other things that are within the ocean. Frogs, frog legs. Oh, there's there's a unending bounty on our crayfish. Coast. Oh, those ones are tasty. I mean, there's there's things that don't even move that we don't have to chase. You the know? slugs. I heard cooked slugs real good. Well, and think of like uh, well, we had um, some snails. We had some sea yep. snails a few months ago. Mm -hmm. um, we had some lipids a few months Look ago. This awesome seafood beverage. The lipids, from what I heard, uh, weren't the most appetizing. Hey, <laughs> hey, who told you that? <laughs> yeah, who told you that? <laughs> Don't talk about the cooking skills of the guest here. <laughs> Yo, he's right there, man. Yeah. The, the spice was uh, the spice was really nice. Yeah. That licorice fern rhizome spice. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> it's a. It's, some of it is you gotta just eat it. You need yeah, the energy, yeah. right? That's it. That's exactly. It. And it's like um like we like we said before. It's like we we want to be able to do the thing in the survival situation as far as let's say we're making a shelter making ourselves um some clothing maybe we, you know lost a chunk of our clothing so now we have to make it out of something um like cedar bark or whatever else we have here there is a an amount of a finite amount of calories within us each day and we need to replace those calories in one way or another and sometimes you know um chewy salty bizarre tasting textures are one that you just suck up chew and you know swallow and that's it yep uh, the water bottle i wanted to speak on that one because i like the the fact also of the uv light i, I take water from moving streams quite a bit i really like the mountain water and uh, one form of protection is the uv light that will help kill some of the bacterias in the uh, water that i harvest uh, and that's one reason why i take the extra weight is the technology of uv light yeah uh, well you know I, safe uh, water is one of the mandatory things that we need to operate with I, I think it's it is it is very mandatory to have clean water. Yep. Um, and there's different ways of doing it. Um, this is um, all, yeah. I like I like these little uh, single walled um, stainless steel containers, um, so I can um, so I can boil my water after I've maybe passed right it. Right in it. Yeah, I'll boil it right in here. Like perfect. Depending on the situation, depending on the water, I might run it through. Yeah, there we go. Oh, clip, <laughs> clip it up. <laughs> I might uh, run my water through like a five stage filter. Um, Yep. Out of things that I have on me, like cloth, um, you know, chunks of my shirt if I have to. Uh, and then after I've ran through that to get the most of the bigger matter. Um, then and that could be if you had to drink from a, a swampy area or some a place that w here we have lots of water. But this is uh, 
those are different options you can yeah well i would be you know depending on um different wildlife in the area like if i'm in an area where there's lots of stagnant water um and i'm not finding a ton of running water there's gonna be that much more reason for me to boil it Mm -hmm. especially like in an area area up, up island where we've got a lot of beaver um, because that can add to um, a really nasty parasite, uh, which we often call beaver fever. Yep. Um, so there's, there's. I think I have that actually. That's a different kind of. Thing. Oh, jeez. <laughs> That's not your idea, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I think. You know why that joke works well today is because I went uh, swimming and the so 97 year old man and he still has beaver fever and I'm like, holy crap, what a death sentence this is. We're gonna have beaver fever till we're like. A hundred. Not that kind of beaver fever, just a different one. A healthier. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I think that beaver fever helps us go and do these things and explore these options. It's like we want to have challenges to keep our our mind strong and our body strong. And we need it. Yeah. We need it. We need we need some sort of challenge. Um, I mean, in all honesty, people should probably challenge themselves on uh, a daily basis. You know, like um, my instructor, um, he would always say to us, uh, "What's that? Can you just turn the mic a bit?" Oh, uh, sorry, sorry. Turn it. Yeah, we got to point we our we, go. we got to point our missiles at the foam sorry, at, at the, the face. foam. So um, one of the things that Frank would always say, uh, one of my favorite instructors, he'd always say, um, "Lose every day." Find something that is a challenge every day. Um, find something you're not very good at and then become good at it. You know, find something you don't know. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, nowadays we've got YouTube. Like it's right now. Um, yeah. there's You there's get to a, pick whatever you want to learn. There's some pretty amazing stuff that we can pick up off the line. Yeah. You know, like it's uh, you can you can watch 10 videos on something, go outside an hour later and you can actually develop, begin to develop that skill, whatever that is. And so I think that, you know. For our, for our audience, I challenge them to develop a skill a week for a month. And what do you mean by a skill? Like in a, something that is uh, in the mind that can be called upon and done in the moment, like from experience, like a couple times, like it's fire? Gotta, there's got to be Or experience. what kind of skill? Yeah, fire fire's fire's would be skill. a good one? Fire is a great skill. But okay. now here's the thing is that um, understanding fire, uh, as we've, explained before in the last uh, podcast as a, as a triangle, not, not thinking of fire as, okay, I need these key elements that I make fire, but thinking about, okay, well, what are all the different things that are flammable? Um, because almost everything is dependent on the size of it and what you're using to start the fire, um, breaking it down to that way. So like I would say in, in over a month, find a new way to make fire every week. Cool. And it doesn't have to be a completely new way. It could be you use, you take your fair seam rod and you make fire with uh, birch bark one week. Next week you use um, sounds cedar like bark. You're, it sounds like you're calling out Canadian men right now to light their doobies in five different methods. That would be a good challenge. Yeah, at least. I want to see your videos. Send me your videos of you lighting a doobie with different types of fire <laughs> methods. Or I'm coming to your house and giving you a kiss. <laughs> that is a threat in the... Is that a threat? In the Cove world order. Oh, <laughs> shit. Okay, I won't do so that. I promise. Of, I'm not coming to kiss uh, you. Speaking of starting a fire with a different method... Uh, with all the hand sanitizers around these oh. days, you oh. have uh, oh, yeah. you right, have right. Uh, come to us with a, with a method using that. So yeah. let's uh, let's talk about that, Darcy. So um, uh, you know, we talked about just briefly before in the last show um, about hand sanitizer having a lot of alcohol in it. Um, we actually have some with us today that is. Uh, I don't think the bottle's been sanitized. No, <laughs> no. It looks. Uh, what does it say? It's. Uh, Aloe vera. 60% alcohol. alcohol. This so, is a fine product from the President's Choice, another sponsor of the show, if they, <laughs> if they would like. If they would, if they would like. President's Choice, we're just calling out. Just calling you out, guys. Yeah. Okay, so um, what we're going to do here, or we're going to attempt to do, is we're going to take some of this hand sanitizer with a little bit of a napkin. I heard that stuff's toxic. Don't get it on your hands. Yeah, well, it's good for making fires. That's right. <laughs> awesome. And we're going to throw a spark on it, and then we're going to try to light up our survival doobies. Whoa. Yeah. Will we get alcohol in the doobie, and will that be a thing? 
Uh, it shouldn't because uh, it's burns off quick. Should be burning off pretty quick. Now, my only concern would be that it's got this other uh, <laughs> item in it. This other stuff, right? Because it's sixty yeah. percent. So let's light the birch from it or something and go straight birch natural to the doobie. Uh, I don't think so. No. No, I think this is what we're we are do. having toxic doobie lunch here at Quadrupod Studios. <laughs> Thank you, President's Choice. So, same as before, we're going to drive our fair CM rod. And that holds it there if it's not falling away. Exactly. I like that technique. Pin it down. Yep. I'm going to push. Jiu-jitsu. Jiu-jitsu on the, on the <laughs> alcohol. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, I'm going to throw, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw sparks from the ferrocium rod. Do you like uh, back of your knife for the ferrocium? Always. Always good. Yeah, that's a, I mean, Keeps that's your edge. A, exactly. Keeps my edge. And I think that that's why they make a lot of these uh, okay, knives. Okay, sharper. Things. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yep. Whoa. Fire instantly from President's Choice. They are the makers of fire. Whoa. That's lit. Very that well is. Good. Look at that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, it's going to burn like a candle. Really. Wow. That's going to stay for a while. Look at this. I'm just going to hold my doobie out. See, it's got take the, the toxic fumes there and get that little and the, and lit. Away. Look at that. We've got fire with one spark. And that, we can see that's still burning yeah, there. It's still going and now good. we have uh, medicine at hand uh, just from the, the gift of the president's choice uh, in your local area. Yeah, so you, as you can see, um, you could use this kind of a product with the with the right wick to make wow. um, an al like an alcohol based lamp. And it just went out just now. So that lasted uh, uh, probably at least thirty seconds. Thirty seconds with that's just a one, one little spark. spark. Yeah, yeah, and that's you know that's long enough. That's well long enough for us to get an actual fire going. Um, that's the thing, you know. It's like with any of these with any of these um, styles of, of fire making. Um, it really, it doesn't necessarily need to be a long burning open flame because realistically well, within a minute or so, you should be able to get it going. We could have lit 30 doobies. Mm. So if you've got, you know, if you've, if you've got a kit that has um, alcohol in it because you're walking around the city with a mask on and hand sanitizer, you've already got a fire kit. Yeah. <clears throat> you could throw some hand sanitizer on the mask. And then you could throw a spark on it, and it would create a wonderful fire for an emergency. You know what? Situation. I really want to see those videos. Please uh, do a, a, a emergency fire kit <laughs> with your hand sanitizer <laughs> and your mask daily. Just I want to see one of those videos. Please send it in. I'm, I really think this could go viral because the government has issued a safety fire kit for all of its citizens. I'm so proud of Canada. Very, very uh, noble of them. I'm very proud of our country and what we've done for our citizens. We have the ability to survive in the woods with hand sanitizer and masks. Well done, <laughs> Canada. So, uh, any other equipment? Uh, that's on, all that's on needed. The table here that we've shown uh, we've shown everybody that all you need is the uh, little bit of juice from the PC and the mask, and you got heat. You got co cooking. <laughs> cooking. Maybe I recommend someone get their uh, one of their teeth removed and get some uh, ferrocium put. It in put there. in there, and then they could just do the sparks. I have, you know, I've like done a bad guy from James Bond. Do movie. they do the, the all matches that light everywhere? I picked up right, my right. first first stone on the beach. The first one I picked it up, got the match. It was a dry one. I was like, wow, these do light everywhere. So that was a cool one. So, um. If we could, if we could take the kit that Kit brought forward here, <laughs> yeah, let's inspect this kit. We could reduce it even more. Yeah, so like, um, there's a lot of luxuries in here. Yeah, and there's, you know, there's aspects here that uh, are going to take up space and weight. Now, one of the things that um, I would definitely make a point of keeping Sorry, is the handsaw, um, and definitely the smaller knife. Yep. The larger knife is fun, isn't it? and the fair seam rod. Whoa, you know, like that's those, a good set. Th those four items, because here's the thing: I can, if I'm making traps, um, or anything that requires like a finer work, I can use this smaller knife. If I if I need to chop things, um, using a baton method, um, so using a another stick to hit against the back here to chop through stuff, 
Um, this big knife is perfect for that, and I'll save the edge of my small guy. Um, and the saw, of course, again, this trio of creation work really well together. And then this Phariseum is going to allow me to create fire in pretty much any situation, which, again, fire isn't necessarily just for, you know, cooking food, staying warm, um, burning down, you know, enemy villages. But it's also it can be used for um, cutting large trees down, right? I can use fire and coals to cut down larger trees along with um, clay, so I clay out the area I don't want to burn, burn the rest of it. I can do the same thing as far as uh, building a dugout canoe or some sort of other flotation device like that. So again, these four, I can create just about everything I need in a, in a wilderness-based survival situation. Now, you know, as we go through environments, um, our packs are going to change a bit, right? So like I brought with me um, uh, an EDC that I have with me um, in in more urban settings so like um again i mentioned uh edc everyday carry um it's it's really it's kind of my go-to as far as stuff in this city and dependent on where i am this could change um because each situation is going to require <clears throat> different uh different uh different problem solvers so like i can't use this holding up the big heli within the city center of Victoria in just about any way without getting in some sort of trouble. So it's not going to come into my city pack, even though this would be mandatory for maybe my outdoors pack, uh, my wilderness pack, sorry. Um, same thing with the saw, whereas the, you know, fair seam and the knife, they would just make the cut into the city pack. But the city pack is going to be things um, that I use on a regular basis. So like, you know, my water bottle is consistent with that. Um, a number of other items I have are consistent with that. And I'll just I'll just grab and pull it out. Cool. I'll put this one away. I want to see this uh, pack, guys. This is going to be fun. Well, I'm going to keep this pack close <laughs> to me now. Geesh. Just shuffling a few items here. Darcy is pulling sure. out his everyday pack here. Nice green canvas, maybe. Yeah, it's just a little. Uh, it's a little Molly, little nylon Molly pack. Um, this is uh, one of those ones that um, you can, they're just little compartments. Um, it's probably one of the smaller sized. It's. Uh, I find it's really handy because I can. I can carry bit like again, basically what I need in a city situation. Um, but I can also strip this out and add stuff for uh, a wilderness situation. Um, now we, we were talking before about the skill sets and gear, um, and it's good to understand that depending on your skill set um, will change the kinds of gear and the amounts of gear that you bring anywhere with you. So um, I found. When I went uh, to do overnights um, five, ten years ago, the kind of gear that I would bring out was very different than, you know, an overnight a couple weeks ago. Um, I, my needs are different, for one, but my understanding is completely different. <clears throat> my knowledge base is quite a bit larger. Um, so the kinds of gear that I bring with me, um, I don't again need as much for you guys that can see this is a very small pack for you guys who can't see this is probably about six inches tall and that's because that you're doing you're using your skill set yeah. from the tools that you have to then create more abilities or more uh or less tools well you know it's it is it's using the skill set to develop options or at least to uh, not just develop them but see the options that are already um at reach Yep. You know, so like a pack like this, um, this could have a whole range of useful tools depending on where I'm going. So like if I know I'm going into a certain situation, I won't bring certain kinds of gear and vice versa. If I know I'm going to a certain situation, I will bring certain kinds of gear. Um, this is TM, by the way, and this pack and this setup is part of the low strategies. And so if you want to copy this, if you're out there, <laughs> make sure you uh, quote the old Darcy here with his uh, abilities because this thing is insane. I cannot wait for this. Okay, so uh, what, I, what I've got here um, is I've got a 511 tactical nylon belt. Oh, um, very good. I like the add-in. What, what can that do? Everything. You Lots. Can, 
lots. I mean, so it's a tool. Yeah, in, th- this belt in itself I could use as a tourniquet if I needed. Yep. Um, I could use this to carry gear. I can use this for a whole range of things that entail cordage. Um, and that, so again, that in itself can be used in a whole, bu- a whole bunch of different ways other than just keeping my pack up. Now, is the buckle... Is that we were talking about this other day? The buckle possibilities for for the uh, steel or yeah, the hardened totally, steel. Totally. So we, um, if you guys, for you guys that can see, um, I've got uh, for you guys that can see. Sorry, um, I'm holding up my fire steel slash um, handhold for bow drill. This uh, this bit of gear theoretically could be used to to act as a belt buckle for sorts um, to keep your gear up depending on the kind of belt you've got. Yep. So keep an open mind um, because, yeah, like all aspects of the kit can be u- utilized in a different way if, you're, uh, if your study is there, if your imagination is there. So getting back to the bag, um, the largest pocket usually has my phone in it, um, but also has uh, an all-weather uh, notebook. So able to take notes, um, yeah. That's, that's and, that, and that's brought to us by the Mill Specs Company. Yeah, yeah, I got this from uh, Capital Iron here Capital in Victoria. Iron, cool. Yeah, and so it, the pages aren't going to be there. Are they coded? Could this be a fire thing as well? Like, yeah, I mean, the, I could burn. I could burn these pages for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, it's freaking hilarious. Is like I had to make a fire um, over at uh, Dante and Tom's. Yep. Um, a couple more month ago, I think maybe it was a month ago, um, and I used paper and a lighter. And holy fuck, it was harder to make the fire with a paper and lighter than it was to do it. Because it burns it and it goes out. Well, and I, I didn't build it the same way as I normally would. I didn't yep. take the same time. You're you just know? like, I think I'm going to light the paper and just uh, go. <laughs> it was pretty funny, man. That's it's, cool. It's, it's been years since I've made one like that, so I didn't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But anyway, yeah, so you could probably burn this paper. Um, I probably, I'd probably use as much of it as possible um, to write Here write notes so I don't lose my mind if I was stuck in a sorrel situation. What about fish hooks from the top? Uh, yeah, possibly. You know, this got a ringed, ringed roof. So if we, you know, if we got into the situation where we had to get rid of paper, um, then the ringlets that keep it, uh, keep it all together wouldn't be as important. So those could be start to be sacrificed, um, to make things like, uh, like Kit just said, like things like fish hooks. Um, especially if we had like a, a multi-tool with us, which, you know, I often have a multi-tool mm-hmm. with me. Um, I have a, a number of different types of multi-tools, but I usually have a Leatherman with me um, for that reason, because I can manufacture so much stuff out of the cityscape. You know, we were talking earlier crafting. about how, yeah, exactly, it's crafting. We were talking earlier about how it's good to look at the city the same way as a, a wilderness environment. Mm-hmm. You know, you have different types of creatures, you yep. have different water sources and resources. So it would be like parkour for cityscapes, but in but in the survival sense. Or is this like just identifying um, things that are garbage thrown away and you could take and make into a quality item if necessary? Oh, for sure. I mean, there's there's all kinds of stuff that people throw out that we could use to make uh, into a, a bit of gear, you know, that either we use for for something or we use that to build something else. Yeah. Um, there's also, you know, there's also just the way the cityscape works um, and seeing the rhythm of it the same way as a, as a wilderness system. You know, mm-hmm. like the wilderness system, they have uh, hours in which certain parts of it operate. And yep. certain parts don't. The cityscape is very much the same way. You think about the types of people that are out at two in the morning versus at eight in the morning. Um, and the wilderness is the same way. Different creatures are out in the middle of the night compared to ones that are during the day doing different things. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can, there's lots of different ways we can see how our gear will um, manufacture options for us. Yeah, within assist the us. cityscape. Assist, assist you assist you in in many ways yeah. that will create uh, a whole bunch of options. I think uh, options that are really good for others too, because it's showing what uh, can be done with very little. Right, right, yeah, and that's it. Is you want to be able to do the maximum amount of stuff with the least amount of stuff. I mean, if you really think about it, it makes sense. It's like we go into a situation. And the more stuff we bring with us, you know, you, if you guys ever gone out with your survival pack, your, 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 uh, your boogie bag and find that all of a sudden, um, you know, 
it's uh, it's incredibly heavy and you no longer have the ability to you know, enjoy the atmosphere in which you are, you know, mm-hmm. where, you're, where you're walking or hiking or whatnot or biking. And, and, you know, if you can reduce the amount of gear you're packing around with you, you will keep your eyes open for other things that you can utilize, which, again, just is another part of the adaptation, um, which is, yeah, super important. So, um, yeah, I don't have a ton of stuff in this gear, but the stuff I've got is hard to replace. Uh, so I've got some um, wet naps just in case of all kinds of things. I need to wipe off Those my are mitts. alcohol ones too. Yeah, so I could burn these Boom. if I had to. Super fire. Yeah, it's and that's it. Is like you never know. Like I like to have. This a is lot my of first baby with alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. don't. I kind of feel drunk. <laughs> what <laughs> okay <laughs> so uh i got some gold always keeping keeping a bit of gold uh, a serious gold wrapped up can yeah. i have a look at that gold darcy <laughs> so i've taken a couple grams of gold um put That's it between uh electrical very tape. nice um it's bright red so it's easy for me to identify so it's harder for me to lose yep um but if i need to i can peel it open two separate little grams that's a good survival situation skill Never MacGyver, if he had gold, I think he would have got out a lot of his stuff. You could have bought him with yeah. Out of here is a fucking <laughs> Canadian mint. So um, another thing, oh. uh, I like uh, this is a silver coin given to me by my lady, um, pure silver. Serious. She's uh, yeah, she's lovely. That goes right in your water bottle, hey. Yeah, I like to bring this with me in a lot of different oh. for a lot of different reasons. Um, one of them is the antimicrobial, antibacterial yep. effects of, of silver on water. Um, so we've got, uh, that's it for the big pocket. Like, again, like I said, I don't pack a ton of gear in here. Um, but the stuff I've got is quite useful. Holy shit. Look at that. Oh, geez. <laughs> that is wonderful. A fire starting cedar. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. A little humidor. I think the essential oils that are for mankind and womankind and all kinds, uh, are cedar. They've been here for a long time and, uh, that vibration could assist, just with one smell. So oh, in, it, nice. in your in your survival situation where you're stuck on the precipice of the challenges that are ahead, smelling the cedar with deep breath will prepare you for anything that may come. Well, you know, in, in something like this, like let's say we've got our survival doobie in here, so um, we can then use this. You know, Do you have a survival doobie in there? Is that thing empty? <laughs> it is empty. Oh! <laughs> what? The best part of your pack is missing. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this is something that you could then use. I'm going to fill that fire. doobie thing for you today. <laughs> <laughs> um, another thing, this is uh, this is one of those items that is often uh, overlooked, oh. um, but is an amazing survival tool. Uh, and I, I and I don't really want to go into the full capabilities of it. I know, but it's good to That's keep in mind. That's a nice one. So this, hey, artwork, the artwork that can be created from this on uh, a piece of paper or whatever is fantastic. Well, and you might have to leave a message. You know, um, Darcy was here. Yes, uh, <laughs> moved location, moved location to you know another landmark. Yeah, um, this will write on rocks. That I can could write save on your life, literally. Um, also, not to and what's, Okay, well, who what it, who makes that marker? This is a Sharpie. Sharpie. I want to give a shout out to Sharpie. Love those guys. <laughs> Thanks for the pen, you guys. <laughs> yeah. It's a little worn in. It's a, we've worn off the ink on that Sharpie. I want to talk to the manager about the uh, ink they're using to keep on the Sharpies. That's a well-used tool. Oh, so man. that's actually a good thing to see a well-used tool tool like that well you know believe it or not i do actually train with this too from time yeah. to time um, well that's what i would say it's a, a very nice uh art tool yes sir so, i almost said the w <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we've got another pen uh this one i use for my uh right in the rain uh pad um really useful and conspicuous we've got our um Whoa. this is uh what the heck is knife that sharpener one? Holy crap! Let's can I see this one here? So this uh, this will sharpen your This is your like knives. a button. What are you talking about? Just this is this is a Wing Chun master's like finger tapper. I wouldn't even want to be hit by that, eh? Boink. <laughs> so you can uh, use the, the if you guys can't see here, um, it's uh, telescopic. Um, the outside is made out of uh, Actually, aluminum. The inside is a diamond bit, and diamond so bit. it's flat on one side. 
so great for our Scandinavian knives. It's rounded on the other sides, so we can use that for um, blades that aren't completely straight. And then down the middle, it's got this groove, which is actually good for fish hooks, so we can resharpen fish hooks. Awesome yeah, piece crazy. of equipment. Yeah, great bit of gear. Well, who makes this thing? I want to give them a shout this out. This is uh, Ruko. Ruko? Ruko. R U K O. Buying one immediately. Ruko. Holy crap. Next level. Like, hey, who goes out to the woods and chops one tree down? Right, right, right. You're well, going to sharpen the axe five, six times. Well, and, and this is, you know, again, this is stuff that I, um, this is usually the city stuff, but some of the bits of gear in here, um, you're going to find in my, my yeah. wilderness pack also. Yeah, this I would think, be one of those ones. That I think I knife think. is the farmer's must carry oh, uh, yeah. for all his uh, activities. Now, this one you're going to enjoy. This is really cool. This is called, the, I think, the getaway tool. By oh. CRKT. Oh, so sweet. Yeah, these are great. Um, I, I've used this one a lot. It's... Do you have one, Rob? No. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. So, uh, what it, it looks like basically like a lighter. Um, and on one side here, um, I can add um, different bits for uh screwdrivers oh yeah that's a multi-tool yeah for, yeah for screwdrivers right and so Wrenches. um there's a there's four different uh four different shapes and sizes here but i've also got um these wrench holes on the other side i've got a bottle opener on this side i've got a little light on this side so with this one interchangeable batteries or uh yep yeah, yeah i can pop that out here at the top so what I've got here is also a pry, and that didn't come with it. They didn't say this is a pry, but I would use this to pry a lot of stuff because mm -hmm. it is a single piece that goes all the way through it. Yep. Um, so you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, tools in this one bit of gear. It's super lightweight, really mm -hmm. small, um, easy to manage. And again, yeah, you can replace the batteries for the light. Um, you could take it apart and replace any of the, any of the spring you could, bits. You, and in Canada, you could just throw a Robertson in there and that's the only one you need. <laughs> that's pretty much everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I also like to carry, um, a little carving knife. This is kind of like a Boy Scout style knife. It's got the three blades in it. Um, now each of these blades is shaped a little differently. Um, all ridiculously sharp too. Um, they're all using uh, the what was it again? Yurko? Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, the Ruko. Ruko. Yeah. So um yeah, you could use Ruko on this. This um these blades here though, they're uh, they're all basically just uh crafting blades. You know, like mm -hmm. this is a, because it's a folding knife, I wouldn't want to necessarily try to baton with this. Um, I would probably break the locking mechanism of the blade to the handle here. Yep. Um, but I could do a ton of small um, kind of like survival crafting, like if making I had a to, spoon or whittling. Yeah, like well, I could you know make the shapes like you need for like an L7 um, trigger for like different types of traps. Gotcha. Um, I could use it to yep. make a lot yep. of the notches I need for like a figure four trigger for you know smaller animal traps. So it's a good good bit of gear. It's small, easy to carry. Um, I've got something in here that's actually part of my wilderness kit that uh, I just forgot to pull out, um, and that is. Uh, this device, which is for removing ticks. Mm. And you, mm. If you hold it up to this well, camera a bit more, then you can... Yeah, that, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, you guys can see the shape here. That's... Uh, get that tick butt slide I just felt a head, tick on my arm when you said the word. I was like, whoa, whoa. creepy. Jeez. Yeah, and it's even, got a little, it's even got a little measurement on it so I can measure out the size of the tick, which is, yeah, lovely but not... Um, well, the measurement tool could be used in so many other aspects tons. of the of the survival usage. Oh, tons! There's so many. And things. you got a little hook thing on there too. Oh, you got your <laughs> got to have a little sucker oh, in there. Peppermint. It's a random mint that's in well, there. Well, it gives you your sugar for There's the day. There's so many Boom. situations that could be useful. Um, so and then I got a little square piece of sapwood. Very good. Okay, yeah, tell us about this because I like this one. Well, this is a you know this is a wonderful fire starter. Um, some of you guys have probably seen uh, seen this used before. So um, you don't if you don't have hand sanitizer. You're in the woods. This is the hand sanitizer of the city everyday carry, and the this is the forest everyday carry. Yeah, well, you know, and it's funny because, like, I do pack a little bit of this around in the city, even though, like, 
Um, just because it's so useful. It is. It is quite useful. But it's that what it's the technique, like the, what you're doing there with those small shavings. Yeah, I'm not sure if you guys can see on the camera just here. Just peeling yeah. off, like it's like fluffy pieces of the of the oily sap inner wood. Yeah, and I've got so I got my knife on a 45. 45. Sorry, on, sorry my bad. On a 90. 90. Yeah. It's okay. On a 90, and uh, yeah, so it's almost it's almost completely flat, and so I create this little like fluff pile. Um, which I want to have as much kind of uh, aeration of all the pieces as possible. Because um, if I crush any of that, it just means that less oxygen um, is going to get to more fuel. Yep. Which means, uh, yeah, our fire just won't create the proper triangle. And now, is this sapwood a, a cedar or what kind of wood? What, what is it? What's it from? Do you this, know? Uh, this stuff in particular is from a really old hemlock. Okay. An ancient hemlock, in fact. Um, the tree, the tree was massive. Um, it was up in uh, the Comox Valley. Cool. So all <sighs> the terpenes are also healing, and oh, yeah. also uh, close to yourself. So you're so you're uh, actually taking yourself back to the woods in the city with this tool too. So this could be a a, a very good. Uh, enhancer for mood and stability in the city oh for sure it could be you know one of those wow uh, almost like a mental health uh um, a mental health trick yeah you know, bring that's yourself cool. back to it yeah and, and that's not often talked about because um our our breath and our 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 mental stability will create the options to practice these different types of skills and then you can use that uh, in in other practices. Boom! You got fire again. Yeah. So now. Um, so that's two types of fire here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and that's it. Is like if you can if you can train to practice one style of fire a week, and uh, that over the course that of a goes month goes for a long time too. It's kind of getting. It's not as long as the quality product from President's Choice, but uh, <laughs> yeah, but, but it's, it's you know that's natural. That one. Well, and that's it. So it? now, does your doobie taste better or do different? Like, oh. tasted pretty good right from the from the from the get go. So yeah. the President's Choice is approved uh, as a quality joint lighting apparatus. <laughs> I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put that in my everyday carry from now on. Uh, President's Choice, send me a shipload. 1917 Balmoral. That's right, that's right. Okay, so as we keep going, um, now this is a bit of a bit of gear that goes in both the city Whoa. and the wilderness. That gear is good. I practiced with that one with you once. Oh yeah, this is the fun. That was a that was a tough day. The, uh, on top of the uh, their equipment there. Yeah, yeah I so think my accuracy was a little off. For you guys that can't see him, I've got mm. a I've got a rock sling here, like David and Goliath. This is David and Goliath. This is, has some really rooted history. And this, you know, and this this sling has lasted for years, and I use it a lot. And I've had to, you know, replace bits and pieces of it over time. Um, but it's the same same pouch and same two pieces of string I've been using for about six years. Uh, and you know, it, it's a simple, simple piece of gear that if I was in a sorrel situation, I could remake. Um, and you know, I don't necessarily need to carry it around with me, but um, one thing that too often people do is they buy new gear, they get gear, and then they don't use it. So they don't understand its limitations, and they don't understand the options it gives them. You know, they only understand this tool as it was sold to them in the package. They don't understand the, the that tool in actual reality. And so even something like this, this rock sling, um, I've used it to carry wood. I've used it to tie things up, all kinds of stuff. I used I used this rock sling as a belt one time for an old pair of pants that had stretched out from from some heavy training, which I know sounds hilarious, but that's what happened. <laughs> and yeah. So, you know, there's there's all kinds of ways to use this gear, but you won't know it until you actually start using it over and over and over again in lots of situations and open up your mind. And so it's good for people to get their pack together of what they think they uh, would like and to go off an adventure and and see the weight of it see the usages of it uh, maybe break it down to uh, just a couple things to practice one art of uh, the the survival technique or the fire technique it's it really is about the patience to take the steps 
that are necessary to get fire and then uh, putting those steps in other things in life and other things that they have to do, other For things sure. that people want to do. So then that becomes the same practice as the fire art, just putting it into something else like uh, uh, going for a walk daily or getting to the forest once a week, uh, going uh, out into the Beacon Hill to see uh, the different uh, flowers and stuff that are up in the summer and the rose gardens and smelling the terpenes. So I think that fire art essentially teaches uh, the human being other uh, ways to do uh, things in their life. For sure. Well, you know, anytime you um, have a goal to attain and a challenge at the beginning of the goal um, and you follow through, the more times you follow through, the easier it actually becomes to achieve the goal. Mm -hmm. um, so what you end up doing is you start to learn if you keep doing it, um, like fire, for instance, if you trained fire all the time, then you got really good at it, but then kept making fire. You start to notice these like nuances, these details that you might not have picked up on before. And then you just keep doing it and you keep doing it and you start to notice more and more nuances. And that's why, you know, when you hear people talk about how they've learned so much in their life, they've realized that they don't know anything at all. Mm -hmm. And it's because you, you start to see the nuances that you didn't even notice before exist. Mm -hmm. You know, and we can get into all kinds of um, talks about survival. And it's crazy because there's, there's so many details to every situation, every part of the world you're trying to survive in, um, whether it be urban or wild or jungle, you know, or subtropical or mountainous, like the, everything's got its different needs. Every bioregion has its different needs. And being able to adapt to each one of those situations under the pressure of the situation itself is paramount and will not happen without the correct training. And so getting back to knowing your gear, um, you got to, you got to take the stuff out. You got to figure it out how it works. You know, like I'll take, um, I'll take new sleeping gear out in shitty situations and put myself, you know, at risk of having a very long, cold, wet night just to see how it goes, to see how it works. I mean, how, see how that thing works with that tent or that, that blanket, yep. whatever so it they, is. When you need it in the, in a situation uh, that you've planned for a few days, that it's there for you, and it performs the duties of the tool. Exactly, and that's the pressure testing. You know, it's the same thing we do with martial arts. You know, we could we could pretend a whole bunch of goofy knife disarms that only work if you have a compliant yeah, partner. Yeah, I'm, I'm massaging my wrists right now from the knife attacks. <laughs> and I found that massage works very well. It yeah, yeah. lengthens the ligaments and reheals it, so it's okay the next day. <laughs> Kit and I were Kit and I were doing some knife sparring. Over there. <laughs> you know, you know, I, you know, it's like, and it's part of our training because we we not only do we enjoy it, but it's also it's it's a it's a needed part of our training to fail and succeed and succeed and fail, um, in order to grow. And uh, I, I, yeah, I highly suggest if you guys are out there training in sort of martial arts stuff, try different styles um, with different people and see where your holes are in the study that you're so used to. Um, because once you identify those holes and fill them with some sort of new skill based uh, thing, whether it be movement or mental, you're, you know, you're going to, you're, you're going to level up. Yeah, yeah. You're going to expand each time. Yeah. It's okay. a lot of fun. So, um, taking the Fibonacci sequence and learning it in this art of survival and all your tools and your, your, what you can do with these limited tools is, is a really cool thing to share. So people out there, I'm sure are loving it. So message in, tell us what you think, tell us what you're going to put in your pack. You know, what is in your everyday town pack or what is in your, uh, uh forest pack. That's pretty cool. Being Absolutely. We have, we've had a couple comments uh, so far just yep. saying saying hello oh, cool. and whatnot. And uh, so we're getting right about an hour here. Darcy, is there anything more in your uh, daily There's pack there? I see you have one, yeah, one, I got one a, or two more tools I got here. A bit, I got a little more gear we can take a look let's at. Let's cover so. a few more tools here and then we'll, uh, we'll wrap up. So this is a tool by Yuko that came with uh, a fair seam rod I bought from them. Oh, yeah. 
and the ferrocene rod actually ended up giving to a friend. Um, but I kept this multi-tool, and it uh, the reason why is because this is an, a very easy to use, not just pry bar, but possibly even as a wedge for a lot of different situations. You now this is a multi-tool, has a little scraper, um, has our different octagon shapes, um, and then we've got this right here. It's a bottle opener, another octagon shape. Um, they, these can, this can be used in a whole bunch of different ways, but one in particular that I really enjoy is the idea of, again, a jam and pop. And being in a cityscape um, for a survival situation, this is a great multi-tool because it's lightweight, small, and this can afford to get me a lot of other tools that I might cool. need. Um, you know, <clears throat> it's funny. Yeah, that's a leverage and a wedge. And all of the tools so is very now. Would that be? Is that you? I see the edges are a little rounded off. Is that a hardened steel as well? This one right here, we could use this one to make fire. It's got it's got a spark. Yeah, right there. Uh, for you guys that can see it, I'm pointing to the top edge. It's a 90 degree angle, um, and that's so that we can create that spark with our ferrocium. Mm -hmm. um, to me, it looks but like this. Um, what I meant was on the flint. Would that one? No, 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 this isn't uh this, I don't think this is high carbon. Okay. Um, I'm looking at it. It looks like it's probably stainless. Yeah. Um, so what, what Kit's referring to is it, with a high carbon, um, tool, um, like what I've got here, my fire steel, that's also, um, good for, uh, using as a handhold for my bow drill. Um, this tool right here, I can actually use for my fair CM also, but its main tool is for, um, throwing sparks with my uh, hard rocks, whether they be um, flint or quartz. Um, flint we don't have here in our bioregion, um, but we do have quartz. So um, I train with both. Um, right now I just have a little a sliver of a piece of uh, Wyoming um, Wyoming. So they're getting fire in Wyoming. Yeah. Well, that was the, yeah. Okay. So, you know, d different bioregions have different things, right? Like they have different, uh, resources you could say. And one of the things down in the South is they've got a lot of Flint, you know, um, we don't have a lot of Flint here, but we have a lot of quartz. Uh, we also have a lot of cedar. Tigger, please which, be quiet. Sorry about that folks. Which a lot of people don't uh, have. Guard dog in the. Hey, chill out. Oh, I think the door's locked. Yeah. 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 Right yeah. So, um, so anyway, again, like, you know, uh, that same thing, Beautiful. Look at the spark, spark just right away. I wouldn't necessarily be able to do that with something that was not uh, high carbon. Right. So let's see if we can get one. Off that. I don't see. Okay, do you want to just grab the door? Okay. One second, please. I'll be back with spark. Yeah, no, I'm not getting a spark with this. I'm pretty sure this is uh, a spark. Yeah, this is a stainless, whereas you, know, you can see with the high carbon, right away we get sparks. Yeah, so um, again, you know, like we were just saying, it depends on your needs uh, for whatever situation you're in. It's going to depend on your EDC. There's no point in carrying a whole bunch of gear that you're going to only use in a survival situation in the woods um, that you're not going to, um, you know, pack around or need in the city. Um, so again, you know, small amounts of stuff that's useful. One of the things you're going to use, you know, a lot in the city is a pen. Mm -hmm. And during, you know, COVID times might be one of those things that, uh, could help you avoid a little contact. The, the Japanese have a saying we really like here, Quadrupod, the pen and the sword in a cord. We found that the, the, the pen was as mighty as the sword. Well, it sure can be these days. Especially, especially. in the city. Yeah. That's, what it, that's what the city was designed for, I guess. It was to uh, civilize uh, mankind and take away the swords and give them pens. <laughs> totally. What? Really? <laughs> no, no, I, I'm not doubting it. I, I, it's, yeah. uh, I think so. It, it sounds like a Shakespeare play or something. <laughs> <laughs> Darcy, yeah. you know, it was a pleasure. Yeah, yeah always, I'm really, man, I'm really always. glad that uh, we're able to laugh uh, like this and, and pass the arts of of practice, which is just basically a, in each minute taking another skill set that you can add to this toolbox of your mind. Yeah, 100%. It's good to share. Love you guys out there. Thanks for listening and thanks for tuning in. Quadrupod Studios. And uh, once again, check out 
Tertia Online for some of Darcy's courses, his uh, Instagram page. And tune in next time for another episode of Who Knows What at Quadrupod Studios. Take care, everybody. Peace out. Bye 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 bye. That was so much fun, guys. Okay. Okay. Okay.